Hello, and welcome back to yet another Retro Channel. This is a quick follow-up to uh, the earlier video on the Bluetooth module that I installed in the Amstrad CPC. Um, it turns out that there are a couple of issues with the way I originally hooked it up. First, the way I gave it power was a little bit off. I had hooked it to this pin, uh, which is on the connector that goes to the main board. Um, this gave it power, but it also interfered with something. I'm not sure exactly what was going on, but it, uh, it was causing the machine to reset itself. Um, so I looked for another place to get power. Now, this pin is where the 5 volts comes in from the external jack, the barrel connector. Um, and then it's switched onto pin 1 down here. So if you connect to pin 1, you only get power when the machine's turned on. If you if you were to connect here, it would always have power whenever the power is connected. So I decided to connect it down here, and that does the job just fine. Um, when the machine is powered on, then the Bluetooth module gets power. So that's uh, that's the correct place, or a correct place to uh, to connect the power for the Bluetooth module. The second problem was that when the Bluetooth module was installed and the audio uh, output was connected directly to the uh, leg of the capacitor C17 or, or C317 or C316, whichever one it is. I, again, I can never remember. Um, but when it's connected directly, the internal cassette drive won't work and uh, the external jacks won't work. And what I think was happening here is that when the Bluetooth module isn't transmitting anything or isn't sending anything over its audio lines, I believe it shorts them to ground to prevent any uh, stray signals from going through. And with it connected to ground, um, any signal that came in, whether it be from the cassette drive or the uh, external jack, when it reached that point and it was connected through that line to the ground on the Bluetooth module, it was just killing the signal completely. Um, it would obviously, you know, you saw it working to, uh, to load uh, software through the Bluetooth module, but you couldn't load a cassette from the cassette drive. So, uh, and, and I got I got to give credit to Noel Lapis of Noel's Retro Lab. Um, I sent the video to him uh, because, you know, he had done the same mods as I had. Uh, in fact, I stole the ideas for these mods from him and the connection point and all that good stuff. I stole all that from him originally to, uh, to uh, put in these uh, external jacks. Um, I sent the video to him in case he hadn't seen something like this, which he has seen something like it. Um, because it doesn't require, you know, it doesn't require you to modify your case to allow you to load software from external sources. He pointed out that he had seen a similar uh, mod on a ZX Spectrum, but that when they did that, um, it prevented... Um, loading from regular cassettes through the audio jacks. So I had to come up and uh, I come back to the lab and open this back up and see if I could come up with a solution for this. And since I think it's an issue of, the, of this cable being grounded when no audio is coming out, um, I decided to treat it like a pull down. So what I've done here is I have a, uh, this is a 3K resistor. Uh, you could probably go lower than that, um, maybe down to a 1K resistor. 
I tried going as low as 100 ohms, um, but there was some leaching of the signal uh, at that low at that low a resistance level. So I just went ahead and, and put in the 300 or the 3k ohm resistor. It would just happen. To, it was a value that happened to be laying here on the desk. So this seems to do the job. Now with this resistor in place, I can load from the cassette drive and I can also still load with the Bluetooth module and I'm sure I can load from the external jacks. Um, so instead of treating it as a dead short to ground, it's a, it, it has, it's a pull down. So when any signal, um, you know, comes through, it gets through, um, signals on the, on this side of the resistor, um, don't pass through to ground because of the resistance. So having done that, let me go ahead and put this back together and show you that now both methods work. Okay, so with the CPC reassembled, I'll go ahead and turn it on. And there we have the main, uh, main screen. Now, first I will load a game from the cassette drive. Um, I had said we were going to do a refurb on this cassette drive. I may still do some cleaning on it. I don't think there'll be a video because this does seem to be working now. Uh, it would appear that from the earlier videos, the problem is actually with this cassette, this ghouls and ghosts. I now have another cassette, a game called Xenon that I got, uh, when I order, it was either the DDI five or the CPC Dandinator. I'm not sure which, but I was also sent that game. So um, we'll go ahead and load this game from cassette. And you'll see that it does in fact work. And I will zip you through this so you don't have to wait the entire time. It's a long loading video or long loading uh, game. Okay, so there you can see we loaded um, Xenon from the cassette drive with no problems. Um, Xenon is, is kind of a neat little game if you ever get a chance. Um, it seems to be similar to Xevious, uh, except that you're driving a tank rather than flying a fighter, uh, flying fighter vessel of some, some kind. Um, but we will go ahead now and load from the uh, Bluetooth module. So we bring the machine up. Wait, like I said, the, the power on the Bluetooth module is coming up now since I had to power off and power back on. Um, so we wait to make sure it connects. And then we go ahead and start the loading process. I've already queued up Arkanoid and we will... Um, Zoom through this one for you too, so. Okay, there is Arkanoid loaded. All right, so you've seen that we can now load from both the internal cassette drive and the Bluetooth module, and I'm sure the external would work as well. So um, that being said, guys, that's all I have for you. Um, like I said, uh, just put that uh, resistor in line with the uh, output from the Bluetooth module, and that'll solve your problem. Uh, of, of using uh, an external or using um, a built-in internal device or an external device. Say you're using, uh, say for instance, you're doing this on a 
ZX Spectrum or something with uh, external audio jacks, this should uh, prevent the Bluetooth module from blocking you doing that. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, a like, uh, that helps the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do. I am trying to boost my subscriber count. So uh, yeah, I'd appreciate it if, you're, if you subscribe if you haven't. Um, if you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, just ring the notification bell. Um, leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, it helps the channel. It helps the video get uh, promoted to more people. And uh, again, I love the interaction with you guys. Uh, as I said on the previous video, this Bluetooth mod idea came from a viewer. It, it's not mine. It didn't come from another uh, YouTuber. Um, it came from a viewer like you. So uh, leave me comments. Uh, leave me suggestions and ideas and hints and tips and tricks. And... I will very much enjoy that. Um, share the video out to your social media and to your friends that you think might like it. Um, speaking of friends, don't forget to go and check out my friends in the YouTube Retro Repairers group. Links to their channels will be in the description section below. They are Steve from 8-Bit Retro Refix, Duncan from Retro Crazy, Peter from 8 Bits in the Basement, Joseph from Joseph Retro Bits, Lee from Captain Commodore, and uh, Neil from Retro for You. We are having uh, this coming Sunday, we are having our monthly live stream that will be hosted over on uh, Steve's channel, 8 Bit Retro Refix. That will be at 7 30 p.m. Um, GMT plus one. Uh, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Again, that's Sunday, August the 27th. Um, so if you have time Sunday afternoon, if you're free, not doing anything, head on over and join us for a, a lively little discussion. And uh, thank you again to my uh, patrons. Their names are appearing on the screen as we speak. Uh, if you would like to support the channel, um, you can do so by hopping over to my Patreon page or my Ko-Fi page. Those are both linked in the description section below. And uh, like I said, uh, uh, in the last video, I will see you in the next video, which this time will hopefully be our, uh, our typical Saturday video. And uh, we may be we may be doing some Commodore stuff. So if you're waiting for me to get back to Commodore, that may be your opportunity. That should do it. So everybody, um, have a great week. Um, stay safe and healthy. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.